Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Welcome to the channel. Uh, today we will try to cover another head and neck space infection. We know that there are so many uh, spaces in head and neck. These are potential spaces, and infection can occur there. So we have to uh, think about these. I have covered already the peritonsillar abscess or the quinsy. and the link for that is there in the description so today we will talk about the parapharyngeal space infection that is parapharyngeal abscess you are requested to subscribe the channel so that you are not going to miss any further videos on these topics and uh, to understand the parapharyngeal abscess first we must know that what parapharyngeal space is Uh, as the name indicates it is also called as lateral uh, pharyngeal space so it is uh, lateral to the pharynx or parallel to the pharynx so this is the cross section at the oropharyngeal level and uh, this is very important to understand this uh, diagram then you can understand the anatomy of these head and neck uh, space infections here you can see that this is in purple color this is the tonsil this is anterior pillar and this is the posterior pillar and this is the peritonsillar space and then is the this one is the superior constrictor uh, muscle and outside that is what we call as buccopharyngeal fascia behind this buccopharyngeal fascia and this is the vertebral body and this is the prevertebral fascia in between the two there it is what we call as a retropharyngeal space which is separated by a fibrous midline raphe into two that is spaces of gillet behind that is the danger space and then is the prevertebral fascia and between prevertebral fascia and prevertebral bodies there is a space which we call as prevertebral space similarly on this side is the same anatomy Uh, which is not present here in this diagram so we concentrate on this one so this area so this is the pharynx and this area is the parapharyngeal space this parapharyngeal space medially you can see this is the medial part it is you know medially uh, it is bounded by the constrictor muscles of the pharynx and buccopharyngeal fascia while posteriorly you can see this is the posteriorly is the prevertebral fascia laterally in front is the this is the medial pterygoid muscle and uh, ramus of the mandible and behind is the parotid gland and anteriorly is the pterygo mandibular raphe here you can see that this parapharyngeal space it can communicate with the retropharyngeal space it can communicate with the peritonsillar space it can communicate the submandibular space and with the carotid space as well this uh, parapharyngeal space in itself it is divided into two compartments that is pre styloid and post styloid compartments are anterior compartment and posterior compartment by the styloid process here this is the styloid process here and muscles attached to this one so in pre styloid compartments there is deep lobe of the parotid then it contains fat connective tissues and lymph nodes while the posterior compartment or post styloid compartment is a neurovascular compartment which contains the carotid sheath and in the carotid sheath there is internal carotid artery and internal jugular vein then last four cranial nerves 9th 10th 11th and 12th and sympathetic chain is also there so accordingly you can very well imagine that if post styloid compartment is involved by any abscess any infection or any mass it will affect the last four cranial nerves it can affect the carotid sheath as well and so lethal symptomatology will be there while in case of pre styloid compartment there will be you know parotid swelling or parotid will be involved along with the lymph node pathologies can also occur there the etiology of parapharyngeal abscess is usually 
It is upper respiratory tract infections like acute and chronic infections of the tonsils and the adenoids are bursting of the peritonsillar abscess. In the diagram, I just showed you that the peritonsillar space is in the vicinity of parapharyngeal abscess. So, it is two ways that infection can spread from parapharyngeal space to peritonsillar space are in reverse direction. Then infection can occur in the parapharyngeal space from the teeth, usually from the lower last molar tooth. The infection of lower last molar tooth can lead to infection in the parapharyngeal space. Then Bezoar's abscess are petrocytus in case of uh, chronic superative otitis media. The abscess can track down and it can travel up to the parapharyngeal space. Then infection can come from other spaces like parotid space infection, retropharyngeal and submaxillary spaces. Then in the etiology, there can be external trauma as well. And in the external trauma, there can be penetrating injuries of the neck, especially in this zone 1 or partially the zone 2. We know that for uh, description of the trauma, external trauma to the neck, we divide the neck into three zones. Zone 1 is below, zone 2 is in the middle and zone 3 is the upper one. So, any penetrating trauma, external trauma in the zone 3 or zone 2 of the neck can lead to parapharyngeal space infections. Uh, if we have to go for injection, for local anesthesia, for laser tonsillectomy especially, the infection can be introduced through that injection or if dentist is using mandibular nerve block injections and infection is being introduced into the parapharyngeal space, again that will be an external root or external trauma. Now clinical features will depend upon the compartment involved in the anterior compartment or pre compartment that is uh, due to the division by the styloid process and the muscles attached to it. The anterior compartment is related to the tonsillar fossa medially and medial pterygoid muscle laterally. So, there will be prolapse of the tonsils and tonsillar fossa. By prolapse, we mean that the tonsil on that side where there will be parapharyngeal abscess, that will be pushed medially. That will be pushed medially and of course, there will be trismus and there will be external swelling which will be there behind the angle of the jaw in the upper part of the neck as you can see in this picture behind the angle of the jaw it will be. So, these this is a triad of symptoms pathognomonic of anterior compartment or pre compartment involvement of the parapharyngeal space. In case of posterior compartment in the posterior compartment that is related to the posterior part of a lateral pharyngeal wall medially and parotid gland laterally. So through the posterior compartment we know that the internal carotid artery, jugular vein, last four cranial nerves, the sympathetic trunk and upper deep cervical lymph nodes are also there and it communicates with the retropharyngeal, submandibular, parotid, carotid and visceral uh, spaces as well. So in that case, there will be bulge of the pharynx behind the posterior pillar. In anterior compartment, from the lateral side, it will be pushing the tonsils medially. While in case of posterior compartment, the swelling will be posterior to the posterior pillar. So, from behind, it will be pushing the uh, posterior pillar forward. And then there can be paralysis of the last four cranial nerves and the sympathetic chain. There can be a swelling of parotid region. But trismus will be minimal in case of post styloid compartment involvement or tonsillar prolapse. That is the medial pushing of the tonsil will be less marked as compared to the pre styloid compartment involved. Then there will be certain features which will be common to both compartments and those are generalized features of any infection. So of course, if infection is there, what we expect is high grade fever. So it will be there either the abscess is there in pre styloid compartment or it is there in the post styloid compartment, then there will be odinophagia. Of course, the patient will complain of sore throat, tarticolus will be there and then signs of toxemia depending upon the severity of infection. If we go for investigations on uh, CBC, there will be leukocytosis and polymorph nuclear cytosis. 
Throat swab can be sent for culture sensitivity. Ultrasonography of the neck and uh, ultrasounded guided aspiration can be done if pus is being found on ultrasonography or we can go for CT scan which is the best imaging examination for diagnosis and follow up of parapharyngeal abscess after treatment. So here on CT scan you can see a huge collection of pus on this side as compared to the other side. Again, huge collection of pus there in the parapharyngeal space and it is pushing the tonsils medially. So we have to start with systemic antibiotics and because there will be a mixed flora so we have to go for triple regime. When we say triple regime it means we should have to administer the coverage from uh, intravenous of course high dosage antibiotics which are covering the gram positive bacteria that will be covered by the penicillin and its derivatives or first generation cephalosporin then third generation cephalosporins to cover the gram negative bacteria and for uh, anaerobes we have to go for metronidazole steroids to reduce the inflammation and then of course strong analgesics may be required and for hydration of the patient due to dinophagia patient definitely will be dehydrated so we have to go for intravenous fluids then drainage of the abscess of course pass anywhere in the body we have to drain it so same principle applies here so either we have to aspirate it during under ultrasound guided aspiration but if it, that that is not sufficient or there is you know again collection of the pus after aspiration we have to go for formal incision and drainage so either we can go for horizontal incision below the angle of the mandible or we can go for if there is a huge collection of pus we can go for Mosher's t-shaped incision and if respiratory airway obstruction is there then we have to think about the tracheostomy as well so this is the angle of the mandible and lower border of the mandible and this is mastoid tip and there we have to give an incision from the mastoid tip towards the chin curved incision which should be two fingers breadth below the uh, uh, border of the mandible to avoid the injury to the mandibular branch of the facial nerve or we can go for T-shaped, Mosher's T-shaped incision. Here in the diagram, you can see this is a T-shaped. So it will give you a wider exposure of the parapharyngeal space. And if any laccoli are there, you can break those laccoli and you can remove that pus from there as well. If it remains untreated, there can be acute laryngeal edema, which can lead to respiratory obstruction and emergency tracheostomy may be required. Thrombophilobitis of the jugular vein with septicemia is one of the complications. Then spread of the infection to retropharyngeal space, spread of the infection lower down towards the mediastinum along the carotid space and even carotid blow out with the massive hemorrhage which is lethal can occur. So with that we come to the end of uh, today's discussion. You are requested to like, comment and subscribe the channel. Thanks for watching.